It is indeed the night of the rematch. The location has been moved to Gainesville, Florida. The 2007 national champions, LSU, against the 2006 national champion, Florida Gators. And when there's a big game here, George Edmondson leads the cheer. SEC on CBS tonight. SEC encounter. The undefeated LSU Tigers ranked number three against the Florida Gators who are ranked number 12. Good evening everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. Tracy Wolfson will be along in just a couple of moments. For only the 10th time in the rich history of this sport, back-to-back -back national champions are meeting in regular season. The last time it happened 19 years ago, Notre Dame and Miami. These two heavyweights slugged it out in Baton Rouge a year ago. That game, one of the classics of the season. LSU won a 28-24, went on to the national title. If this one resembles in any way that one, we're in for a special treat. And how can it not? Uh, you know, the fact is, the winner of this game won the last two national championships. And we were here two years ago. Had LSU won that game, they might be defending back-to-back -back champions. And I think this game is going to be the same type of battle. Now, usually I like to talk about all this strategy and everything, and we're going to get to that. But in this game, it's a battle of one-on-ones. There's going to be 22 of them all over the field. And if you don't win your man-to-man -man matchup, I think the other team is going to find you. This guy will not hide. He's been called out, and he's emotional. But to play quarterback and win, he's going to have to compose himself. I think he will. Here comes Tim Tebow, and he is joined by the Florida Gators. champions, the Tigers of LSU. Kickoff is next. SEC on CBS tonight. The defending national champion LSU Tigers, who lost here two years ago, 23 to 10, to the Florida Gators, who then went on to win the national championship in 2006. A perfect mid-October evening in Gainesville. 70 percent humidity, no rain in the immediate forecast. This is the 55-50-15. These two have met. And three of the last four decided by four points or fewer. This game and all SEC college football games is brought to you in crystal clear CBS high definition. LSU Tigers face the Florida Gators. Both coaches in their fourth season. Urban Meyer came here from Utah. Brandon James is back to return the punt. LSU won the toss. Deferred the option to the second half, so they will kick off. And a quick note, for the second time this year, they did this at Auburn, Josh Jasper, who wears number 30, will share that number with the putter, Dalfrey, normally number 38. He's wearing number 30 tonight as well. Les Miles has never explained why he did it then, nor <laughs> did he tell us he was going to do it tonight. A little trickeration. Brandon James is back to return it. He had one for a touchdown, wiped out in Arkansas last week because of a penalty. To the 32. A lot of trash talk before this game. 
And let's get more on that from Tracy Wolfson. That's right, Fern. There was a lot of trash talk, specifically from LSU right tackle Ricky Jean Francois, who told a local newspaper, if we get a good shot on Tebow, we're going to try our best to take him out of the game. That certainly stirred things up a bit, Tebow telling us. That talk just fires him up. But, guys, after all that talk, guess what? Ricky Jean Francois didn't even show up. He's back in Baton Rouge with a groin injury. Well, the groin injury occurred in the game against Mississippi State. Ricky Jean Francois has not practiced fully since that game, and so he did not make the trip. And a quick toss out of the left caught by uh, Percy Harvin. And the lineup's presented by Chick-fil-A, Tim Tebow. Numbers are down from last year, his Heisman Trophy winning sophomore year. The line, the Pouncey Twins in the middle, Troutwine having missed all of last year's back at left tackle. Great speed among these guys. Murphy, Moore, Hernandez, the tight end, Harvin, and Deontay Thompson. Chris Rainey is on the field now, number three. Another speed back. And that one goes nowhere. Yeah, Drake Navis, who's playing for Ricky John in this football game, made the play. Just overpowered him up front. Defensively, it's Nevis, where Ricky Jean Francois was. Jackson, Alexander, and Pittman, the other four. In the middle, Derry Beckwith. He's missed the last two games. Riley has had a good season so far. And the secondary, it's Hawkins Coleman. Curtis Taylor is the only starter who returns from last year. Now on third and long, Jeff Demps, another freshman speedster, is in the backfield. Tebow back. Has time, goes deep in a crossing pattern. Harvin, it's tipped and caught. One man to beat. Touchdown, Florida. It was Danny McCray, number 44, who tipped it. Danny McCray had pretty good coverage. But boy, I'll tell you, when you watch a few LSU games, the ball seems to find number 44, and good things haven't been happening. Jonathan Phillips on for the extra point. He missed one, had it blocked last home game here against Ole Miss. That was the difference in a 31-30 loss. This one up and perfect. The first thing that sticks out is good pass protection for Tebow. LSU rushes five. It's a zone blitz. And then inside, McCray is playing man to man. So he's got plenty of time to step in it. But this should have been knocked down. McCray misjudges the throw, and it costs him seven points. You can't make mistakes like that with a national championship. It's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Well, it was a blitz, and I was wrong. It was man-to-man -man coverage. There's McCray, and there's Harvin. It's got them all over the field. Now watch. Right at the end of this, Harvin makes a real subtle little move and just kind of gets his hand to the back of McCray. Just throws McCray slightly off and mistimes his jump. Officials did not see it. That's what receivers do all the time. Just a little bit of a jostling there at the end of it. And a pass that could have been intercepted ends up being a seven-point play. That's a career-long touchdown reception by Percy Harvin. It's also a career-long touchdown pass by Tim Tebow. 70 yards. It's also the first touchdown allowed by LSU in the first quarter this year. Keelan Williams is one of two men back. Brendan Holiday, the 5-5 speedster, is also there. This is Caleb Sturgis, and this will be Williams. He fakes the reverse and comes near side. Gets a block and then is knocked down as he gets to the 37-yard line. Tackle made by Joe Hayden, the sophomore cornerback, who's in the starting lineup. Jarrett Lee. Red shirt freshman from Brenham, Texas. Got the start at home two weeks ago against Mississippi State. One of the heroes at the win in Auburn. But this is his first start in the SEC on the road. 
Well, I think it's probably more pressure playing the fourth quarter of a tie game than a start in an even game. Of course, he's behind, isn't he? <laughs> that was pretty fast. Charles Scott, who has rushed for 100 or more in each of the first four games, this one is dropped. Out on the wing, it's an incomplete pass, no lateral. The rest of the offense, Saron Black may be the best of the bunch. Barksdale is the only first-year starter in yeah. the offensive line. Played a little last year, but he's a good football player. LaFell, Scott, Johnson is the fullback. Dixon is switched to number 18. Demetrius Bird is the other wide receiver. That drop was Chris Mitchell. Second down and 10. Lee under center, backs in the eye. Defensively for the Gators. Trateau, Marsh, Sanders, and Cunningham, the front four. Jones spikes the leading tackler. Ryan Stamper is the starter at the other linebacker. Jenkins, a freshman, Black, Wright, and Joe Hayden. Both teams have started now with a third and long. Florida converted on third and 12. Here's LSU, third and nine. Three-man rush. Lee goes right, incomplete. Behind Mitchell. It'll be fourth down for Les Miles' team. That was a misread from the quarterback that time. Florida's what's playing what you call quarters. Everybody had one quarter of the field. The receiver ran the fade, and Jared Lee threw the out. No chance. Now here is Dalfrey, who is wearing number 30. Oh, it's Jasper is, it is back to punt. It is Jasper. He has punted once this year for 45 yards. Dalfrey is normally the guy who's back there. A little rugby kick to the right. This will bounce in front of Brandon James, and he will let it come to a rest. It stopped at the 20-yard line. That's a 42-yard punt, nothing on the return. Percy Harvin, one of the stars, one of the speedsters of this Florida team. Seven zip Gators. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Nissan. Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Geico. And by Bud Light. 90,000 and change on hand at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Florida Field, Gainesville. Also known as the Swamp. Tim Tebow now 79 touchdowns against only 12 turnovers. He threw an interception last week that ended a streak of 203. Without a pick, that's the third longest streak in SEC history. Here's the option. Tebow pitches at the last minute. Not much there. It's a gain of one as uh, Jeff Demps gets the hand. I really think Florida might have stumbled into something late in that game against Arkansas that could be the way to open the cork on this offense. Not just having your speed outside or bringing it in with Percy Harvin, but go with the young freshman. Both of them, the two fastest players on the team, handing the ball off to them might kind of clean the drain out for this offense. I think. <laughs> Nicely stated. Both had 103 yards rushing in that win. First time two freshmen have both rushed in excess of 100 for the Gators. Here's a fake to Demps. Tebow rolls out. Has a man complete after the 32-yard line. That is good. Riley Cooper, the 6'3 junior, with his eighth catch of the year. It's a game of 10 and a first down. Well, Tebow, uh, we spent, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 right. minutes with him yesterday. Among other things he said to us, I think you'll see me running the ball more tonight than I have in previous games. Well, I, I think he's willing to. Okay. Now that is, that's, uh, we'll, we'll see, you know, if they can throw the ball the way they've been throwing so far, they might not have to. Harvin's in, Keiston Moore split right. Now here's another toss, it's complete to the 40. It's Harvin. 
And he's got a bunch and a first down in LSU territory. You're right. They keep that up all night, and Tebow won't carry it. Well, so far, LSU, so they're just they're slipping. They're jumping too soon. They're dropping balls. They're out of sorts here. I think it's Jai Eugene this time, number four, falls down on this play. Harvin, easy play, no speed there. Eugene just falls down and takes a three-yard pass and turns it into, you know, a long pass. It's just LSU is their own worst enemy to start this football game. That is a gain of 25 and a first down at the 43. Tebow's perfect so far, looks for James. He's covered, so he goes to Demps in the flat. And Jeff Demps taken down by Curtis Taylor, number 27, but he does get a first down at the 32. That's a gain of 11. Now, now subtly, now Tebow's not making the highlight plays but a year ago, but subtly he's making different plays. Here's the coverage back here. Look at this. This is pretty good coverage. Now, nobody really open. Here's the drop off, man. A year ago, Tim came to him late. Now he's coming to him in rhythm and look at how that moves the chains. You know, he's not making those highlight runs and passes. Uh, Sometimes he is, <laughs> but he's getting better at the other stuff. This is Brandon James in motion. Tebow drills it. Caught inside the 20 by Deontay Thompson. Number six, it's another Florida first down. We go back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. Rough time for Tommy Tuberville at Jordan Hare. They had three looks inside the 10 yard line. Couldn't get it in and then Cody Burns is picked off by Matt Harris and Arkansas pulls the upset. Also other unbeatens underway. Missouri gets a field goal as does Penn State and they lead Wisconsin by three. Vernon Gary back to you. All right Tim of course the big news in Auburn this week Tim Tuberville's decision to fire first year offensive coordinator Tony Franklin. Here comes LSU they're coming. Indeed. They fake the reverse. Here's the pitch right side. It's Brandon James out of bounds at the 11. Chris Hawkins defending. See, so you're getting the whole uh, Urban Meyer, Dan Mullen package here now. Putting Brandon James in, faking the reverse, freezing guys to the backfield. Two guys right there freeze. That creates running lanes and creates from a four yard gain to an eight yard gain. You know, this Florida team, they've scored on their first drive in three games already this year, Miami, Tennessee, and Arkansas. And of course, this game, that's their fourth. David Nelson, number 83, is on the field now. One of those split to the top of the screen. Second down, two. Tebow. And that should be enough for the first down. Opening quarter, second drive. Les Miles' team finds itself trailing 7 0. This back to back meeting between national champions. The only score in the game came on a third and 12. Tim Tebow, a tipped pass. Tipped by Danny McRae, the defender, into the hands of Percy Harvin. It was a foot race. He wins that every time. And you can see 17 of 18 prior to tonight 12 field goals and five. 12 touchdowns and five field goals for the Gators. Now Chris Rainey, number three, is in the backfield with Tebow, Brandon James. Here's the handoff straight up the middle to Rainey. And he's inside the five. If you can remember the game from last year, that was what they did right out, run right at you. Here's the touchdown, third and long. McCray misjudges it a bit. Harvin gets his hand to his back just a bit. And a well defended, well, good start for the LSU offense turns into seven points for Florida. Second down. Harvin is back in there. Percy Harvin injured an ankle in the loss at home to Ole Miss, so he is playing with a brace on that ankle. And he's going to be one of three to the left. Keaston Moore is also there. Harvin in motion. Tebow, not much pressure. Now he drills it into the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Percy Harvin. Well defended by LSU. That was kind of a rub play trying to pick the receiver to get him in the flat and LSU just ran right through it and took away the first throw. Chad Jones number three defending the nickelback. Now Tate Casey is going to join the offensive huddle for Keiston Moore. He's an extra tight end on third and goal. 
Can you that, say jump pass? Well, they might be a little far away, but <laughs> okay. it, this is what I will say. If you're the defensive coordinator right here, you've got to get that ball out of Tebow's hands quickly. Well, he doesn't jump, but he fires it. It's incomplete. Crowd in that end zone wanted a flag. There is not one. It'll be fourth down. Very good drive. And I think it's a one of those situations where Tebow went to the first receiver. The tight end was covered, went to the slant, and again, decent coverage on that play to Harvin. Jonathan Phillips, senior, actually has graduated and applied to law school. He's in his first year as the field goal kicker. Hung on, finally won the job this year. He'd already been accepted to the University of Miami Law School. He's perfect for the year. Six of six. Make it seven of seven for Jonathan Phillips from Wellington, Florida. That was a must stop for LSU and they came through on that. Phillips with three. And with seven minutes to go in the first quarter, it's 10 zip Gators. Regional coverage the NFL on CBS tomorrow. Baltimore at Indianapolis, big game early. Other games in New Orleans, the Jets in Houston. And a late game, Jacksonville at Denver. It all begins with JV in the quartet. The NFL today, tomorrow, noon Eastern time. Jonathan Phillips will kick off this time. And Trendon Holiday is one of two back. He's back there with Keelan Williams. And this will be Holiday, who twice in his career has returned kickoffs four touchdowns he has great great speed whoa and that was a a saving tackle I don't know that he'd have gone all the way but he would have gotten 15 we, or we 20 might, more might have got a look at it now if there's one team that should not panic by a 10 nothing score that is Les Miles's LSU team remember the national championship game they were behind last year they trailed Florida 10 to nothing in that game they trailed Auburn that football game they won they've been in a lot of big football games and they've been behind and won they won at Auburn earlier for only the first time in 10 years here's Jarrett Lee came on in that game 0 for 5 then threw an interception for a touchdown but came back with an outstanding second half here's Charles Scott who has emerged Everybody thought they were going to run by committee this year, right. but Scott just really took to the uh, position and grabbed hold of it. Well, I will say this. They better find some running game quickly in this game because I don't know if Jared Lee is far enough along to win this game by itself. LSU needs their running backs. Richard Murphy, one of the running backs, is split wide to the left and out of the spread. Stunts by the Florida defense and the catch incomplete Chris Mitchell had hands on it but he was a little bit off balance Jared Lee September 7th 20th at Auburn here was the first pass Gary it was just awful yeah well uh, Auburn was misaligned he thought he had a free guy he did not he learned from it though came back from it after an 0 5 start he found his game and put the game away on a pass when they could have kicked, kicked the field goal I can tell you right now though Lee has started slowly again that was an awful pass that last one he just threw Third and ten. Hand off Scott. Fourth and eight. Let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim Brenda. Burn, Gary, another one of those teams making a bid for number one with uh, Oklahoma's loss earlier today. Missouri, but it's Oklahoma State Zach Robinson that takes it in from six yards out. A battle of two 5 0 teams, and the Cowboys have the lead over the Tigers. Back to you. All right, Tim. I think all of us had a chance to watch that Oklahoma Texas game today. One of the great games in the storied history of that rivalry. Brady Dalfrey, wearing number 30, is on to punt now. He's the left footed kicker, punter, and here's Brandon James. Uh oh. Uh, I really don't get it. The rugby punt worked well on the first one with Trinan Holiday out there to run it down. 
Now they kick it to the most, maybe the most valuable player for Florida right now, Brandon James, and he turns it back and turns the field upside down. What was wrong with the old strategy? I'm thinking right now of what we heard in Knoxville in the Florida-Tennessee game. Why, oh why, right. would you punt the ball to Brandon James? Didn't work. Last time Tim Tebow and the Gators were on this field, they lost to Ole Miss 31-30. We talked to Tim yesterday. Is there one play he'd like back? And this is the one he chose, a fumbled handoff. Ole Miss recovered at the 18 and scored. There was also a fourth and one late in the game that failed. Sorry. Uh, extremely sorry. You know, we were hoping for an undefeated season. That was my goal, something Florida's never done here. But I promise you one thing, a lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season, and you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season, and you never see a team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. That statement by Tim Tebow was 45 minutes after the game. It took him that long to get in and talk to the media. Vern, even though I don't like to talk about momentum a lot, Urban Meyer loves to talk about momentum. He's got it. Let's see if he tries to pile on with it now. Three to the right on first down. He Tebow, does. one step up. Tebow shakes it. And he holds on as he is tackled. He was going deep with it. Great coverage by LSU. Tyson Jackson. First full sack of the year for number 93. Play action pass. Tebow fakes the run. Gets pressure first and then can't find anybody to throw the ball to. Good defensive first down play. I think that LSU defense was thinking the same thing I was. They were going to go deep, and that secondary and pass rush was ready. Loss of three, second and 13. Chris Rainey is the running back. They're using all four of their running backs this evening. Hand off up the middle. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Looked like Marlon Favorite, number 99, might have uh, grabbed the face mask. And that's going to be on a first down, obviously. You know, this defense for LSU as we watch the, the penalty here. Personal foul, face mask, number 99 on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Just reaching out a hand, trying to grab everything, and you can anything as it passes by, and you can see Favorite did it right there. But, Vern, you know, so far, LSU really hasn't played anybody that had any type of an offense. Appalachia State couldn't match up. North Texas is brutal. Auburn, brutal. Mississippi State, brutal on offense. This is the first team that's really had some athletes that can really stretch this defense. Percy Harvin, number one, back on the field. First down and 10 after the penalty. It's Harvin in the backfield. And he goes left. Tackled inside the 20 by Perry Riley, number 56. And just going back to that theme that I was talking about, yes, there's a lot of good football players on LSU, obviously. They're a good football team. But they lost some playmakers. There are two corners, Jonathan Zenon, Chevis Jackson, Glenn Dorsey, obviously, Craig Stelts, who produced turnovers, and, and Ali Highsmith. Those were turnover guys. Right now, LSU's not producing turnovers. They're just playing solid defense. And their former defensive coordinator, Bill yes. Pelini, yes, is now point. the head coach at Nebraska. Second down and two. Tebow starts forward, comes right side. There's a, an attempt at the block. The catch is made by Deontay Thompson. And it will be first and goal, Florida. Chris Hawkins with the tackle. Look at how many different guys are touching the ball for Florida. Tebow, again, does not force the ball downfield. Drop it off this time, Deontay Thompson. Just guy after guy after guy. And Tebow is just, you know, we saw that energy. But he's calmed down now. He's not trying to do it with emotion. He's playing quarterback. First and goal. See the play selection. Eight runs, nine passes. Double tight end set now with Jeff Demps, number two, in the backfield. Tebow keeps it. Knocked out of bounds inside the two.
Harry Coleman had the hit, but when you're getting pummeled on defense, I don't know why you want to do a lot of talking. Harry Coleman comes up, gets a nice hit, and then he gets up and talks right to Tebow after the play. I mean, you're going to be down at least arguably 13-0, 17-0. I might concentrate on my assignments. Tebow said yesterday, I don't talk trash. He said, I will give you a long look now and then. I mean, you might see the, the jump pass now. Yes, indeed. Here it is. He's going to keep it. Nice defense. Now we refer to the jump pass. Tim Tebow scored on that jump pass. The first touchdown here. Tate Casey caught the ball. That was two years ago. He has subsequently thrown that uh, jump pass three times and completed all three for touchdowns. Here was the first. This was against LSU. Casey, they won it 23-10 last year at Kentucky. The pass went to Aaron Hernandez, and then earlier this year, it was Hernandez again, three for three on the jump pass. And you know what it does? It softens up those linebackers. They have to be ready for that now. You should be able to hit them with the run game a little easier. So I'm practiced that play yesterday, late afternoon. Nope. Flag in the... Yeah, got to delay a game. Ah. I think they did. Jackson made the tackle, but this might cost four to five. Before the snap, delay of game, number 15 on the offense, five-yard wow, penalty, wow, wow. remains third down. Wait, I, I tell you, LSU hanging in there by their fingernails right now. See the play clock on the right side. Yep. You know, Tebow knew the clock, but the center didn't. He called for it in time. But that time up front, Pouncey didn't get it to him in time. Urban Meyer chatted with him. He said, are you satisfied? He said, absolutely not, particularly by the penalties. They had 12 in that loss to Ole Miss, or last week at Arkansas in a win. They had 13 earlier here against Hawaii. Third down, Tebow. Got it, touchdown, Percy Harvin. The connection clicks for the second time tonight. Tebow to Harvin. Touchdown, Florida. I really think the punt, the punt to James was the key play in this try. I mean, I don't get why you would do that. Butch Rowley will hold. Jonathan Phillips for the extra point. Up and good. We saw this act in Knoxville a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. 17 0 Florida in that game. Now, remember, the first time it was the rugby punt with Trin and Holiday in the game, the run down James. James is as good as anyone in the country when he gets his hands on the ball. But now you're in great field position, even after the penalty. Percy Harvin runs right across two LSU guys. And what does Harvin, what does Tebow do? Gestures right to LSU. Here I am. Where are you, Ricky Gene? We're back in Gainesville in the swamp. Check out CBSSports.com's Game Centers. You'll get live scoring and in-depth stats for the top 25 teams. It's all at CBSSports.com. I tell you, when you have a versatile player like Percy Harvin, he's like a Reggie Bush. And right now, Florida is playing, where's Reggie, where's Percy? Here's the kick. Bounces in front of Trendon Holiday. He grabs it at the seven. This is a guy who's been clocked in 10.02 on the 100 meters. And he is popped as he goes out of bounds up near the 43. No flag. Now look what the formation did. Here's the tough spot. This is Derry Beckwith right there. He's on coverage on Percy Harvin. They're treating him as a running back. All Beckwith has to do is not let him get inside. Yes, yes, yes. He's too good for me, coach. I've tried to do what you said. He's just too good for me. I don't know if they can match up a linebacker on Harvin. They should never consider him a running back when he splits out. LSU gets it for the third time, trailing by 17. Jarrett Lee comes up under center. 103 to go. Here's Lee, right side. Second time they've tried it, Brandon LaFell. 
completes the pass. Well, Percy Harvin playing with a brace on an injured ankle. Off to a great start. First career game with two touchdown catches. Yeah, he and I asked him, I said, I heard you're 100 percent. He said, no, and I really am not. <laughs> right. I'm pretty fast. Obviously, he is, but I'm I will not be 100 percent until this season's over. Heel surgery in the spring to correct. He said then he felt better than he had since he was a sophomore in high school. Here's Lee. Right side intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Spikes, the middle linebacker. This is a bad route by Ricky Dixon. I know the quarterback gets it. Now, Dixon, watch him come out. And he runs upfield. Inside, Spikes runs a straight line. Dixon kind of curves his route. He cuts inside and makes the play. If Dixon would have broke out 90 degrees, no way that Spikes makes that interception. Bad pass route by your tight end. First career interception that adds to the woes for LSU as Dixon broke off the route. He curved it, actually, and uh, one of the heroes of the LSU National Championship win last year makes a mistake that cost his team. Here's the handoff. Jeff Demps for... Either 10 or 11. We'll see about the spot. Well, now think about this. LSU's only given up three points in the first quarter all year. They've never faced anything like this. Demps in the backfield. They found a new wrinkle to this spread. Now, remember last year they ran right at LSU and gave them problems. They ran right at Dorsey, to be honest. But they didn't have this kind of speed. It's thrown this LSU defense out of kilter. Demps is a true freshman. Here's the stretch first down. Chris Rainey is a red shirt freshman with 10 seconds to go in the first half. Listen to this. Total yardage, Florida 186, LSU 4. Yeah, I, I think LSU, what do they have? Two three and outs, one play and an interception. Right. They were the defending national champs in 04 when they lost at Georgia. Well, bad things can happen when it's nighttime in the swamp and you're the visitor. That's the end of the first. We'll return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We're back in Gainesville. Tim Tebow told us yesterday, sometimes this year it's been more like a business. I want to get back to having fun playing the game. Well, this seems pretty fun, doesn't <laughs> I it? I think so. You know, that first pass could have meant so much in this football game. It was slightly underthrown, pretty well covered, and, you know, you get a struggling. I know their stats are good, but let's be honest. Nobody's been more critical of this team on offense than Urban Meyer. They've not looked like the Florida offense everybody anticipated with a returning Heisman Trophy quarterback coming back. As we open the second quarter, first down and 10 at the 39. Here's Tebow. Pulls back, fires deep left side. Man coverage, and it is incomplete. Uh, this thing has been extraordinary through the first 15 minutes. Yeah, um, so far, LSU seems tight, okay? And they're not running their routes sharp. They're dropping passes. You know, they're, they're, they're jumping up and missing balls that they should be getting. And, and you know what? The Florida defensive line is stoning that offensive line, which should be the strength of this football team. It has to be changed very quickly or they've got no chance. Are you surprised by what we've seen? Well, I don't think LSU has faced the talent yet. I mean, no offense to Auburn, but Auburn wasn't offensively ready to play against this uh, defense. That pass incomplete intended for Harbin, who never saw it. Let's go back to Tim in New York. All right, fellas, here's your game breaker in the Big Ten, Derek Williams. This is going to be his fifth career punt or kickoff return for a touchdown. That's a record at Penn State. This one goes 63 yards against the Badgers. It's 17 to nothing, Nittany Lions. Burn. Now, Tim, that sounds like something we're watching here. 17 nothing, Florida. Look at this. 11 and a half minutes to three and a half. Passing yards 149 to 1. Keystone Moore, more of a wide receiver now than he is a running back. Here's Tebow back, empty backfield deep to Harden. 
Over Harry Coleman, first down, no, no, incomplete. Beautifully thrown ball. Coleman was in decent position considering he's a safety covering, you know, maybe the best receiver in college football. I thought Harbin could should have come up with that one. Let's see. Ball's perfectly thrown. Oh yeah, you gotta catch that. Great job by Coleman coming over the top and stripping it. Yes, he did. That's that's just a wonderful play by Coleman. You can't even play that one on Percy Harvin. That's just good defense. Harry Coleman, a junior out of Baldwin, Louisiana. Remember when he came in the, uh, the national championship game and Stelts was hurt? Yes, fair catch. Taken by Chad Jones inside the 10-yard line. Fairly rare to see a guy take a fair catch inside the 10. Charles Scott, he's rushed for 100 or more in four straight games. Held in check so far. He's on the field when we return. Brilliant scene on the opening minute of the second quarter. Florida filled to the rim with 90,000. There are a few LSU fans inside. And the Aflac trivia question, who were the last two defending national champions to play in the regular season? We'll have the answer in a bit. See, now I say if you don't know the answer to this question, you don't have a TV. Well, if you don't know the answer, you weren't listening to our open. Or, 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 <laughs> or watching TV all week. Now Since listen, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, your offensive line is supposed to be the strength of your team. You gotta run Charles Scott and see if Florida can stop the running game. Scott, three carries, three yards. And he's uh, knocked down by Jermaine Cunningham. You know what I mean? I mean, this is, you know, I don't I don't really care that Jared Lee had a good game against Auburn. This is still Florida. You, you made your team with running the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if we see, in fact, I think is Hatch in the game? Would not be surprised if we get the running quarterback in the game. We yes. are. Andrew Hatch. He started the season. He was uh, knocked out of the game at Auburn with a concussion. Did not play against Mississippi State. He is the running quarterback. Here's the option played brilliantly by Florida, and Hatch is knocked down at the 15. Andrew Hatch, a circuitous route to this spot on the LSU roster for the season. He is the second leading runner behind Charles Scott for LSU. Now, here comes Jarrett Lee back in. Rotating quarterbacks. Well, Les Miles told us he was going to play Hatch. And remember, even when Matt Flynn last year, they ran Ryan Paraloot for some success in this football game. Third and four. Play clock at three. Stunts defensively across the middle. Caught by Dixon, and he should have enough for the first down. Richard Dixon. That's a seven-yard gain, and the first first down for LSU in the ballgame. We began play on the opening drive of third and 12. Tim Tebow hit Percy Harvin 70 yards to make it 7 0. Jonathan Phillips added a three yard field goal. Then it was Tebow to Harvin at the end of the first quarter. Florida has dominated in this game from the get go. LSU has just picked up its first first down of the night. Jarrett Lee looks downfield. That one is caught at the 31 yard line. Brandon LaFell. That's a game of 11. That was a wonderful pass from Jared Lee. Now he's had slow starts already, and in this game, whether it's been mental mistakes or inaccurate throws, he's had a poor start again. But, you know, if you're LSU, you say, all right, we've seen this. We've been behind by before. Can we put it together? And we trust that this guy can throw, but I still think they need to run the ball. Old fashioned eye formation on first down. Quinn Johnson is the fullback, and Richard Murphy is in there. Murphy gets the handoff. Yeah, that's, see, that keeps Tebow on the sideline, and Harvin on the sideline also. Tackle made by Teron Sanders, number 92. Richard Murphy on the charts is the third teamer. Keelan Williams is listed as the starter, but they use Scott almost uh, to the exclusion of the rest of the guys this year. Andrew Hatch is back in. And he will go under center.
Option. The toss. Good block. The dot spikes out of the play. And Richard Murphy comes down the right side. That's going to be another first down. Now they've got a little bit going. Yeah, I, I think that this is not, you know, everybody talks about the two quarterback system. It's kind of easy to criticize. But when you've got a guy that can do something real different, perfect job on the option that time, taking it right to the end of the line of scrimmage, optioning off A.J. Jones. When you got a guy that could do something different and you're struggling 17 to nothing, how can you not do something? First down and ten. Holiday is in the game again. Last time he motioned back into the into the backfield. Hatch will go from the spread. Brett Helms, number 74, is the center. Four men down for Florida. They come right at him. And the pass. Oh boy, Holiday was popped by Janoris Jenkins, a true freshman for Florida. Gonna try to get the ball to Holiday in space. Handed to him on the speed sweeps, but there's another true freshman. Last year was Joe Caden that played as a true freshman, and now Jenkins is a guy. Still a lot of man coverage on early downs from Florida because they're bringing that safety in the box. They don't, I'm telling you, Florida fears that LSU can run it right at them. Second and seven, Jarrett Lee is back in as they rotate quarterbacks. Here's Scott. And he's up across the 50. LSU uh, gets into Florida territory for the first time tonight. You mentioned Keelan Williams, but frankly, Charles Scott just beat him out. He was just so good, they had to use him. He's become this year's Jacob Hester. He's so good, he doesn't turn the ball over. And Keelan Williams, who's now third stream, right. was actually all SEC last year, second team voted by the coaches. He's the third string running back on this team. Well, you mentioned Jacob Hester. Scott has emulated him, primarily the work ethic and the physicality he's brought to the position. Now, Andrew Hatch under center. They hand it to Scott. There's a fumble. And Florida, I believe, has recovered A.J. Jones' second LSU turnover. The streak has ended. Over 600 carries by the tailback position. Hand it off to Scott. Fullback goes one way, tailback goes the other way. Ball is placed and fumbled. Don't know exactly whose fault it is, but it was a fumble. That is the first fumble by an LSU tailback in 612 wow, 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 wow. carries. 612. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC continues after this word from your local station. Central on CBS. Charles Scott fumbles. First fumble lost by a tailback in the last 612 carries. And it hit him high. Yeah. No? I don't want to contradict myself because I, I say I don't really feel that bad about doing two quarterbacks, but... Sometimes quarterbacks hand the ball off a little differently. And according to Charles Scott, because we saw it uh, during the break, he felt the ball hit him a little high. Hatch is in the game. It's not Lee. It was not comfortable, but I think also it was a little high on his number. You see Scott saying it hit me a little high. But also Torrey Davis was in the backfield and he, you know, might have slowed down, might have speed up, might try to make a move, but you got two quarterbacks, that means twice the ball handling. And it's second down and seven Florida now with 9 10 to go before the break. This is Brandon James alongside Tim Tebow. That's the play in which they fumbled against Ole Miss in the loss here. This time successful. Let's go back to New York. Here's Tim. Okay, Vern, Gary, uh, Missouri with a little zone read action of their own to take a 10 7 lead. This is Derek Washington taking it in from five yards out against Oklahoma State. Plus, Wisconsin, their quarterback, Allen Everidge, takes it in from five yards out to now tighten that one up at 17 7. Penn State still with the lead. All right, Tom, Tim, and Tom, Tim. Tiny Tim. It's 17 0 here. Demps is uh, on the field. Number two, he's wide to the right. Aaron Hernandez, the tight end, goes in motion and sets up by Tebow. Percy Harvin tipped by Coleman. That's a second good play by Harry Coleman, number 24. LSU came out. That was a, the old Pelini defense right there. 
third and short. I'm not going to let you have an easy throw. They went after Tebow, and it was good coverage back there. And Percy Harvin uh, strained that ankle again. Yes, didn't he? indeed. He told us that he tweaks it. He's on the inside slot again, third from the bottom. Nice job from the corner going to back. Ball's not quite there, but it's tipped away beautifully. Ball a little behind. Harvin says, I tweak it, but usually I get better. This one looks like more than a tweak, doesn't it? It's wearing a brace, as Vern told you. Well, he injured that ankle against uh, Arkansas last week. And uh, said it locks the ankle. That's the intent. We'll see if he can get back on the field. Yeah, what he said is it. I, I don't feel like I re hurt it. It just it's got a sharp pain and then give me a few minutes. I'm usually OK. Fourth down. And so Chaz Henry is on the punt. Chad Jones makes the fair catch signal at the 15 yard line. Maybe the 16. LSU is surviving this, aren't they so far? They could put some points on the board here. Yeah, but they're gasping for air. Right now they are. Eight oh eight to go, second quarter. Florida up by seventeen. Athlete. Well, the last two defending national champions to play in the regular season, nineteen eighty nine, Notre Dame and Miami. They also played the year prior to that. Here's the list. It's only happened ten times, including tonight. Notre Dame has been involved in the game seven times, and the home team has never been defeated. Seven wins. And one tie that tie in the middle of that graphic Notre Dame and Southern Cal in 68. High formation. Jarrett Lee. Nothing. Charles Scott. Uh, this, this has to be pretty shocking to LSU. Arkansas ran the ball right up the gut of this Florida defense. And today these eight man fronts that Florida's featuring here. They're not getting knocked off the ball at all. I mean, you know, Ole Miss knocked him off the ball a bit. Well, we talked with Charlie Strong, the Florida defensive coordinator. He said, we're really undersized up front. We're not very big. I know, but they got Torrey Davis and, and Brandon Antoine back. back that right. might help them a bit here. Keelan Williams is in the backfield, number five. Yeah. Big Marsh is in there now. He's big enough. <laughs> Brandon LaFell, number one, starts in motion, comes back. There's the stunt and the contact made LaFell with the catch and he stays upright. It's going to be close for the first down. It is just short. Nice job by Jared Lee hanging in the pocket that time. LSU's had three first downs, all of them on the last series prior to the fumble. Now, good pass protection. A Cunningham gets inside and rocks Lee. On the right side of the, of the formation, the Lee's blind spot. That's why Lee was a little shaking his head after that throw. No measurement, third and one. Andrew Hatch, number 14, back in at quarterback. He's joined there by Richard Murphy, number 26. He's got to be the quarterback sneak quarterback. Oh, there we go. Eight, Time out. Sometimes you can get a little too cute, can't you? So the clock stops with six minutes and 50 seconds to go first half, third and one when we come back. And Florida got a big break today with Vandy's loss at uh, Mississippi State, their first loss of the year. All three, of course, members of the SEC East. South Carolina with a big win late at Kentucky. Yeah, uh, Spurrier doing a good job, isn't he? Yes, third and one. Hatch, quarterback sneak, and it's first down and 10 LSU. And let's uh, go down to Tracy Wilson, Trace. Guys, on that last series, someone fell on center Brett Helms' left ankle. He was in obvious pain. They put some padding inside the shoe, taped it heavily, and sent him back out there. They said they will see how he does and evaluate him after this series. Yeah, a little bit of a limp as he comes up sure over was. the ball. Sure yeah. was. Hometown Stuttgart, Arkansas, his dad, a Ph.D., a graduate in agronomy from LSU. Lee lets it go, and there's a flag down. Brandon LaFell, the intended receiver. 
And uh, I think Joe Hayden's going to get a contact downfield on that one for pass interference. Now Jared Lee limping. He was popped when he let it go by A.J. Jones. Might have grabbed him as he was going by LaFell. Pass interference, number five on the defense. That'll be 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Talking to Joe Hayden about his man-to-man -man technique, and he said this year we're allowed to play off or on. It's our call. This time Hayden goes off. Bell goes right by him that time. He feels he's going to get beat, and that's a good penalty. He tried to just uh, tweak him a bit, and he saw it, and the referee was right on top of it. Steve Shaw, the official, and it's a first down LSU. They trail by 17. Andrew Hatch back in. Again, he started the first three games. Concussion in Auburn opened the door for Jared Lee. Did not play against Mississippi State. Here's the run. Right side. Andrew Hatch, we mentioned a circuitous route to this position as the LSU quarterback. He grew up in Las Vegas and went to Gary Croton's quarterback camp twice. And he committed to BYU when Croton was the head coach at BYU, and then when Gary was dismissed, uh, he kind of backed out of it. Well, his options included a trip to Harvard. So as a freshman, he played in five JV games at Harvard, then went on a Mormon mission for two years in Chile. We'll continue that when we bring Senior down. LaFell. And just to complete the story on the incomplete pass, Andrew Hatch played one year at Harvard, five JV games, took the Mormon mission to Chile. While he was there, he got involved in a soccer game, ruined his left knee, came back, hadn't played football in two years. Croton, in the meantime, had taken the offensive coordinator job at LSU, you still with me? I got it so okay. far. It's, the story's actually longer than his mission. <laughs> <laughs> or the recovery That's from right. the knee injury. <laughs> Third down. And he's not in the game right now. He's currently <laughs> across the middle. Oh, my. Major right with the defensive hit. Well, see, this is what playing off as a defensive back can do. You're able to help in the run game, but you're also able to keep in front of you in the passing game, and he times it, and Major Wright gets one of those reminiscent Reggie Nelson tackles. Remember when he was the eraser here? That seems to be the one thing this defense is missing, that safety that erases all those mistakes up front. Brandon James is back near the 12-yard line. It's Dalfrey. Again, both Dalfrey and Jasper are wearing number 30. And this one, oh, oh my. Sideways bounce there. Went into the end zone. Now it's going to be a touchback. Oh, yes, there's the signal. All it has to do is break an imaginary plane of glass. The official stra straddles the line. Watch him at the top right here, throw his bean bag. He thinks it, obviously he did, he'll throw his bean bag right there. If you, you know, kind of easy if you know all the tricks, you know. <laughs> you don't even have to watch the ball. So Florida gets it back, 527 to go in the first half. Now this is a very interesting time for Florida. They're dominating the game, obviously 17 to nothing. They don't want to make a mistake and let LSU back in the game. They don't want to sit on it. What do they call? They hand it off to Chris Rainey. Monday, the worse it gets, the funnier it is. Catch TV's number one new comedy, Worst Week, Monday, right after two and a half men on CBS. There is a big difference in this Florida offense with speed at tailback. I mean, we've seen it, you know, Moody, good football player. The guys they had last year were good football players, but it didn't scare the defense, okay? And now they've got a guy back there that scares the defense and it forces you to play more honest. 12 players on this team run under a 4-4-40. Four, four, Here's one of them. Rainey, Kelvin Shepard can't make the tackle up high, number 11. Rainey with the first down. Percy Harvin, perhaps the fastest 
of the group with the ball, but these kids can really score. Oh, they might argue with on that one. I hope they don't listen to this replay, Vern. They may be coming after you on this one. Demps and Rainey. What did we say to Harvin? Who's the fastest? Well, uh, here's the deal. We <laughs> asked Percy Harvin to put together a 4 by 100 meter relay team. He had Brandon James leading off. Right. Harvin said, I'm going to run the second leg. Right. Chris Rainey, the third, and Demps, the anchor. Yeah. Now, who's left out? Lewis Murphy. Hey, uh, just in case somebody gets hurt. Yeah. Tebow. See how they get outside now? Look at this. I see what you mean. See, it's, it's just a whole different offense now. Hmm? You know, before with that tailback, and, and you know the other thing that's really subtle here? Tebow's not taking hits. Tebow comes out, it's almost like a long sweep. Look at it, just pitch it out to this guy, run the sweep to the outside. That's speed at that position. You know what's interesting about both Demps and Rainey is they didn't come here as receivers. They both were high school running backs. Now you can throw anything you want if you're Florida. Jeff Demps behind Tebow on first down and 10. Florida over 200 yards total offense. They ride it up the middle. And Demps close to breaking it. He's tackled at the 40-yard line. What's the guy for uh, Oregon State's name? That, that Jaquez Rogers? Yeah, that's right. it. I got some help on that one. I couldn't remember. When that little guy ran the ball against USC right up the middle, I think Urban said, well, I got two guys like that. Why don't I use my two guys? And it's changed the Florida. Now, it wasn't until the fourth quarter of the Arkansas game that it really opened, I think, his eyes. But it's a different team now. Well, they won that game in the fourth quarter. And both uh, the kids ran in excess of 100 yards. Here's the handoff up the middle. Of the two, Demps is the more straight-ahead runner. Rainey the more elusive. But it's a pretty good freshman one-two punch. They actually raced in the street and had three races. And Demps beat Rainey, we are told, two to one. Well, I'll tell you right, this is a dangerous time for LSU. They, they need a stop. It's man to man. They're coming after him. Lewis Murphy is uh, in motion. Six man rush. Tebow comes near side. Harvin is wide open back there. And uh, that'll be. Second down at the 30 yard line. Patrick Peterson, the freshman, made the tackle. We're in the swamp in Gainesville where Florida dominated in the first quarter. They jumped out to a 17 0 lead. The highlight two touchdown passes Tim Tebow, Percy Harvin, the first of which covered 70 yards on a third and 12. You might get a little taste of Tebow now. He's been very quiet. Hands it off to Harvin. Harvin cuts up field. And he's got a first down at the 25. You know what? Tebow said to, to us yesterday, and he said, you might get me running a little early. They, he hasn't carried it they, one, they well, don't once. Need, they, they don't really don't need him, right. do they? I mean, this is a godsend to Florida fans. They, If they could keep Tebow healthy and his threat right there to run the ball, makes plays and then now they're distributing it to all these athletes. First down 10. Demps. Comes to the left and that gives us a moment to go back to New York to spend it with Tim Brando. All right Vern Gary there's no doubt the class of the Big Ten right now is Penn State. This is happening at Camp Randall. Okay, Daryl Clark taking it in from two yards out. They have opened up a 24 to seven lead at the break. Back to you. All right, Tim, and we're back just in time to see the timeout taken by Florida. Well, just prior to the timeout, the head coach of the Florida Gators, hands on knees, and looked like he was uh, about to get sick. Yeah, he, he got very lightheaded. And we trust, we don't have to look away. He doesn't do anything that no, you no, can't no. do. No, no, no. You're, all, you're no. all right, you're safe. You don't have to turn the children away. But he was lightheaded. 
remember doing a basketball game at Cameron Indoor with Mike Krzyzewski against Georgia Tech. And Mike was uh, talking to his team. Yeah. And, and he leaned over really? and he just keeled. Well, I, I do remember that. That's, you know what I, I think is perhaps Urban is going, I'm, I'm going to faint. This is what I thought my offense would look like this year. <laughs> this is what I kind of figured we'd look like. Now, we don't know if that was the reason for the timeout taken, but we're back to play. Second down and six, Demps alongside Tebow. Tebow has thrown for two so far. He's under some real pressure and lets it go incomplete. Third and six. 90,000 plus on hand. And coming up at the half, Tim Spencer, Tony Barnhart, the Geico Halftime Report. Midway through the 2008 season. Florida has 250 yards and LSU has 65. I, I think, though, this is not a gimme field goal from this spot. I mean, LSU gets the ball to start the second half. Can they hold on here and keep this a football game? It's third and six, 125 to go. That's Brandon James. Tebow inside pitch. And they caught him. It was Aaron Hernandez. It will be fourth down. And Hernandez is down. It's the this was one of the gimmick plays that Florida has been working on. They go unbalanced line and it's a shuffle pass. He can pitch it one way or shuffle it back inside. And Hernandez could not get away and make a first down on that play. Carnell Hatcher number 37 made the tackle. And it will be fourth and two when play resumes. Interesting call here. Fourth and two. Field mm -hmm. goal makes it 20 to nothing. But you've got plenty of time and two timeouts if you're Florida if you go for it. And the ball at the 17. Now, now you wonder is how lightheaded is Urban Meyer. He's making the decision here. It would be a 34-yard field goal if they attempted it. And uh, I know I'd kick the field goal, but that, that's just you know, well, the way you do it. It's in your conservative nature. It is. I'm a real conservative guy. It will be Jonathan Phillips, who is 7 for 7 for the year, kicked one earlier tonight. Butch Rowley is the holder, and LSU has called a timeout. Boy, Tebow was really lobbying. It's a season for that. <laughs> Saturday night in the swamp, Monday on CBS. One brother's employees, another brother's opportunity on TV's number one comedy, Two and a Half Men. Don't miss a new episode Monday at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Well, you're going to try to avoid this kick away from Holiday. You don't think LSU's offense can score on you, but you think maybe number eight could. Jonathan Phillips will kick off and kicks it the other guy. Oh, Stephen Williams stepped out, out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one, though, with that ball up in the air like that. You, now, now the official might say that the ball crossed the plane before it was caught. And then that'll be a re-kick or take the ball at the 40, because the flag did come out. So the ball crossed the sideline plane before it was caught. Now, I oh, don't no. think so. No. Now, that's a reviewable play. That is a reviewable play. Ben Odom is the replay official. Boy, it sure did not look like it from that end zone view. You know what I, I'm thinking here is that since his catch came out of bounds, he will get the ball at the 40. Since he did not make a play, as he caught the ball, he steps out in the same action. His first step is out of bounds. That means the ball automatically goes to the 40-yard line. Our official in the booth helped us on this one. Rocky Good. Or as his badge says, Rocky God. I don't know <laughs> if you see it. Does it? It says Rocky God this week. <laughs> Longtime SEC official who's traveling with us. And so, illegal procedure, the ball at the 40. Jarrett Lee is the quarterback. Flag thrown. Yeah, play clock was at zero. Yep. 
See, Urban still is wanting to know, get clarification on the rule, too. Delay of game, number 12 on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Urban wants to know, he says one foot was in, and then he caught it, and his other foot went out. It, Urban, I didn't know this one either. I got to be honest with you. Okay, here's Keelan see his, Williams. See, one foot was in the air. When his other foot comes down, that means the ball was out of bounds. Unique call. You don't see that every day. Well, then in this case, it's the player and not the ball. That's right. Right? That's right. As and we're told from the get-go, it's the ball. On the, on the end sometimes. Okay. Yes. Hey. I'm just trying to confuse you. This is... They're going to review it now. Boy, I hope hope old Rocky's right on this one. <laughs> so does Rocky. <laughs> uh, now, isn't that interesting? Because the ball wasn't snapped, they could still go back and review it. I, you know, to be honest, that's a big difference. If the ball goes back to where it was, LSU will not be able to run their plays. At the 40, they can now the ball did not cross the plane. Left foot. Williams catches it with one foot out. Now the question is, Urban Wire, Meyer wants to know why is the ball spotted where he caught it? He had one foot in on the what? 13 yard line, 14 yard 14. line instead of the 40. There's the left foot, then the right foot comes down. And if you really want to know this rule, you're a big college football fan. I'll tell you that right now. That's a big difference, though, from the 14 and the 40 for LSU. Ben Odom again is the replay official tonight. Here's Steve Shaw. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is first down and 15, LSU. Florida will be charged a timeout. Do you hear that booing? Yes. 90,000 people don't know the rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. But one guy does. Oh, Rocky yeah, Good. The happiest guy in the booth right here. <laughs> oh, goodness. But the five yard penalty now changes the strategy. I mean, it's, you know, it's amazing. LSU needs some points, but are they willing to risk it? The quarterback will be the redshirt freshman Jarrett Lee out of Brenham, Texas. With 48 seconds to go before the break. Both teams, one timeout left. Lee has a man open, and it is caught by Terrence Tolliver, and that's going to be a first down at the 40-yard line. That's the one guy I wondered why LSU is not getting more in the game plan. Tolliver is a game breaker, and Gary Croton told us we must find ways to get big plays be from him because he can produce them. That's only a second catch of the season. It's a gain of 24 and a first down at the 41 of Florida. One timeout left. Now, remember, in retrospect, if Keelan Williams would have just let the ball go, it would have been a re-kick, too. So either way, bad kickoff by Florida. Lee out of the spread. LaFell in motion. Stunts. Quick flip left side. Brandon LaFell gets a clearing block. And he's out of bounds to stop the clock at the 30-yard line. Marquis Anderson, number 14, was there to push him out of bounds. 37 seconds to go. That's why I always preach. Just keep your head down. Keep playing. Don't worry about the score. If you score a touchdown, it's a new game. Florida. They've not allowed a point yet in this one. You saw over the first five games, they've allowed only 10 in the first half. First down. Across the middle to Dixon, the tight end, number 18. He tries to fight to get out of bounds and does not. You have to take a timeout. I'm pretty sure they will, LSU. There's Colt David, the senior place kicker from Grapevine, Texas. Les Miles looks up at the clock, 22 seconds to go. And LSU has taken its final timeout of the first half. David, six of seven for the year. Reason for a little celebration in the LSU cheering section. It's uh, LSU with a second down 
No, they're celebrating in the Florida section, too. It's the music. It's the music. No, they all knew the rule. Second and three. Trendon Holiday is on the field. Lee goes left, LaFell, they give it off a lateral to Holiday down the sidelines and out of bounds to stop the clock. It will be first and goal with 15 seconds to left. It looked like the hook and lateral. It is. It's one of the plays, absolutely, it's out of Urban Meyer's playbook from Utah. There's the guy right there. They're going to throw it out and pitch it to Holiday coming around. I saw this for the first time, Utah against Notre Dame or Ohio State. Who was it? I can't remember. Notre Dame. Run the play, come out, and pitch it out. A little taste of Urban's own medicine. Time for two plays, I think. Big block by Saron Black, their best offensive lineman, number 70. First and goal, LSU. LaFell right side. Here's Lee Blitz. Lee has it tipped as he tries to let it go. It's incomplete. Jermaine Cunningham, number 49. That was close. I thought it was going to be a quick fade. Now, the number that Les Miles and Gary Croton go with, as you look coming from behind, Cunningham on the speed rush around Black, gets it just his arm, is eight seconds. So he knows he can run a fade here and still have time. Ask Auburn. Ah, from a year ago. Ten seconds to go. Helms over the ball. They'll go from the spread. It's Richard Murphy who's late getting into possession. That's Brandon LaFell. Starts in motion. Lee rolling out under pressure. Has a man in the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. Chris Mitchell. Number 86 who caught a big touchdown at Auburn. Wow. Now remember, LSU gets the ball to start the second half. The kickoff was huge. Try to run a rub off. Remember what I said, getting the ball at the 40-yard line is way different from the 14. It proved to be. Colt David will attempt the extra point. Dalfrey's hold. David is up and good. And with five seconds to go in the first half, what had been a lifeless LSU team there's Mitchell Vern. Right. Murphy is going to try to come in here and pick to the outside for LaFell. LaFell was not open, but Mitchell goes to the inside and makes an easy throw to the outside. Joe Hayden just gave him too much of a bank that time. That was just too simple. Watch Joe Hayden right here. He banks to the inside, and Mitchell just runs, and he's open by six yards. Chris Mitchell, second touchdown of 2008. Jarrett Lee found him under pressure. Just score one touchdown. All of a sudden, it doesn't look so hard. Jarrett Lee. Les Miles. Lee started out one for five this game. Remember Auburn, he started out 0 for five. Interception against Auburn, interception against Florida. The guy's a gamer, isn't he? Played for his uh, Brenham Cub High School team. Started out actually in Brownwood, Texas, where his dad was a coach, Stephen. Father is now the wide receiver coach at Brenham. Here's a squib kick with five seconds to go before the break. Trenton Holiday being on the field on that kickoff unit altered Florida's plan, and it cost Florida. Big finish by LSU. Chris Mitchell with the touchdown catch from Jarrett Lee. Football game now. Indeed. Tracy's with Les Miles. Coach, just 65 yards of total offense before that drive, but a huge score to go in. What was the difference? Well, we moved the ball in the air. We gave, gave a quarterback some protection, and we got into rhythm on offense. First couple of drives, we had no rhythm on offense at all. Defensively, though, you looked at us saying, what is Florida doing that's confusing you? Well, they, they're a very uh, multiple offense with a lot of different personnel groups, and you have to be really on it. I, to me, the back end of that half, our defense played well. The front end was a little, little uh, toughy. Thanks a lot, Coach. See you. At the 10-yard line. The Swamp 
on Saturday night. This one bounces at the 25. Muffed by Holiday, but he grabs it. Avoids that tackle, but he can't avoid the next. He is down at the 20 yard line. Well, what do you what do you take from the finish at the end of that uh, quarter? Well, life for LSU, but here I think is the biggest factor in the football game. The front seven for Florida has been pl outplaying the front seven for LSU. I mean, uh, you heard Les say it to Tracy down there. He, he was looking for a different word than this is so so. I didn't. He was using a locker room word he couldn't use on TV. Right. They are not dominate, dominating with that front four in the defensive line. First down 10, Jared Lee is the quarterback. Little cut block by Brett Helms on the middle. Well, Tim Tebow got off to that great start, hitting a 70-yard pass on the first third and long. And in the first quarter, Jarrett Lee, the redshirt freshman, 10 passing yards. In the second, 91, just the reverse for Tebow. Yeah. 149 to 10. And, and probably, you know, three quarters to 90% of those were in the last drive. Second and short, eye formation. Hand off Scott. Nothing. Just nothing. Wow. Well, Charles Scott having rushed for a hundred yards plus in the, each of the first four games has been held in check in this one. He's got a total of 11 yards and uh, credited with a fumble. It was the first fumble by an LSU tailback in 612 carries. Third and one. Florida is reading the fullback. They're going to the fullback. They believe if they follow the fullback, it'll take them to the ball. It did. But they got the first down. They will move the chain. Lawrence Marsh with the tackle. Well, the fullback is Quinn Johnson, number 45, and those linebackers inside. Stamper and spikes just flow to it. Johnson that times, you know, when it, you know how you run to daylight? He runs the darkness and creates daylight. That's what Johnson does. He just finds a body and says, I'll make daylight. Quinn Johnson, number 45, first and 10. Just a footnote, Florida led Ole Miss here two weeks ago by 10 at the half and lost 31-30. Lee right side catch made near the 40 yard line by Demetrius Bird the tackle made by Janoris Jenkins number 29. Well when you talk to Gary Croton about his young quarterback he says he's very quick getting rid of the football and you can see not a lot of wasted motion right there just quick and throw quick and throw and finally getting Demetrius Bird involved in this football game. Well, this is going to be a penalty. No, they're going to put out quarterback to the top of the screen right there. There's the quarterback. I thought it was 12 men in the huddle. And it's going to be Murphy who takes the direct snaps. Charles Scott's alongside. Tucks it and comes right. And still pushes the pile as he gets uh, another first down for LSU at the 43-yard line. Interesting. Well, a little uh, the wild hog formation is going. It's even in the NFL right now. Miami Dolphins has turned their season around with Gene Malzone's offense they, by way of Arkansas, right? Gus yep. Malzone's offense, excuse me, by way of Arkansas. Les Miles' team training by 13. Brandon LaFell, number one. Corner blitz. Yep, Hawkins is coming. Right side of Janoris Jenkins, rather, number 29. Well, the NFL today, tomorrow, noon Eastern time. What got into the Miami Dolphins? They doubled last year's win total, and they've beaten up the Pats and the Chargers. Ronnie Brown, the former Auburn great, running something called the Wildcat Formation. Yep. Dan Marino. The story of the Dolphins turnaround tomorrow. I don't think they ever let, but let Dan Marino go out there at wide receiver, did they? No, 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 no. <laughs> Second down. Opening drive, third quarter. Stunts again by the Florida defense. Lee has a man, LaFell, across the middle. And it's a first down at the 36-yard line. And you get a little sense of unease 
starting to waft through this crowd. Well, you know, brass time, Brandon Spikes overran the play. LaFell is in the backfield on this play right there, but watch Spikes overrun it. They're going with a quick huddle. They bunch up to the left side, and they come with a pass to the near side. Four men bunched wide left, and they hit Demetrius Bird on the near side. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty surprised that they threw that play. You know, we were trying to get a replay in there. At that time, I thought he could have gone to the bunch side and had a pretty successful play. You know, you save it, save it, save it, and you get a little two-yard, four-yard gain out of it. Second down. Keelan Williams is on the field. Number five. Across the middle, caught by Dixon, number 18. That will be short of the first down. The ball will be spotted at the 29. Dixon wearing number 18 this year. He was 82 a year ago. Uh, a continuation of a tradition that was started by Matt Walk, who was the quarterback on the national championship team in 2003. He wore 18, and when he graduated, he asked Jacob Hester to wear number 18. Hester, a star of last year's national championship team, will the number to Richard Dixon. The advantage is the less miles here. Florida has to assume he's going to use two downs to pick up the first down. Tenth play of the drive. Stunts again. Lee. Incomplete, knocked away by Joe Hayden. There's a flag down. Yep, the Joe Hayden wrap around. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice to watch a young player grow up? And remember Brandon LaFell, who he struggled last year catching the ball, and now he looks so confident. See if this is on number five. Pass interference, number 21 on the defense. Whoa. Called on Major Wright. And my eyes must have been off a little bit. It was Major Wright inside there on, but it was the same player. See, I thought it was number five, but it was to the other side. I thought Joe Hayden had it. That's who the ball yeah. was thrown at. Hand off right side, Keelan Williams. He spilled at the 22, no gain, but a very impressive opening thrust by the LSU Tigers here. In this game, we talked about what a great ball game it was a year ago. Florida won, led that one 17-7 at the half and wound up losing 28-24. This game has a different feel, though, yeah, it doesn't does. it? That, yeah. that game was such a man-on-man -man running the ball between the tackles. This game is more played on the perimeter. Andrew Hatch, the running quarterback, is in the spread. Empty backfield. Now Holiday goes back with him, number eight. Holiday has it, goes left, looks for blocking help. Inside the 10, out of bounds with a first and goal LSU at the three yard line. Well, Holiday's as fast as Rainey and Demps, and now LSU is using him in the same manner, getting him to get to the outside. And Holiday is a football player also. Caught Les Miles' eye at an LSU camp when he ran a 4-2-7-40 in high-top sneakers without taking a stance. Listed at 5'5", 164, and clocked at 10.02 in the 100-meter dash. Here's the option. Hatch stretches. Touchdown, LSU! See it all the time when a team gets the ball at the beginning of the second half and they score at the end of the first half because of that kickoff. The game can turn. It's like getting to serve twice in a row in tennis. It's the only time you get to do it when the half ends and you get the ball at the beginning. It's, it's very, very interesting. Colt David is on for the extra point. Up and good. 80 yards, 12 plays. Six minutes and 19 seconds, Andrew Hatch, the quarterback run. And the LSU Tigers have cut the margin to six with 8.41 to go, third quarter. LSU Tigers open the third quarter with a lengthy drive. 
And uh, the payoff came from quarterback Andrew Hatch. Extra point good. It's 20 to 14 before a crowd at 90,684. This one it was whistled dead. Okay, it was whistled dead. Before the kick, yes. You know, Vern, as they, they reset this thing up, I don't know if it, uh, well, obviously, it has to come from Les Miles. I don't know. Delay of game on the kicking team. That's a five yard penalty. They'll re kick. And they whistled that thing dead before. How does that happen? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if there's a team in college football that plays with more poise than a Les Miles team. You know, they get behind, they don't panic. They run their offense. They seem to have trick plays. They can run tough. I mean, you know, this, this is pretty impressive football. Now, now not, they want to win this game. But LSU is not dead if they do happen to lose this football game. Absolutely. You know, they can play their way back into the SEC championship. They did it last year and maybe place Florida or Georgia again for the championship. Les Miles has rotated his quarterbacks in this ball game. And he's gotten good play out of Jared Lee, who started one of five, and Lee now 14 of his last 17. Hatch has come in and run the ball well, and Les Miles still trying to figure out why the delay of game call. Usually the official signals the ball ready to kick, and you kick it. Seems like a just it rule. Seems like you don't take 25 seconds after he says, go ahead, here's the ball. Well, he's still asking what's what. That's what he just said. He handed him the ball. I, I think Les got a pretty good argument here. It's a now remember, it's a 25 second clock in this instance, but the ref hides the ball. He signals you to kick it. Kick it. How can you get a delay of making? They kicked from the 25. Good kick. Taken at the eight yard line. Brandon James comes left, cut down as he gets to the 32-yard line. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete, James Smith, senior, majoring in exercise physiology and kinesiology. And he's a 2008 Grady Award semifinalist, a long snapper on this team. He's a senior now and one of the standouts on special teams, and he is today's Red Lobster scholar athlete. First down and 10. Here's Tebow back. First possession for Florida in this half. It's Harvin across the middle. Well, we have received an explanation of sorts from Steve Shaw. He did not, we are told, mark the ball ready for play. Florida took the ball and kicked it. Thus the delay of game. LSU, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what happened. In, lieu, in lieu of anything exactly. else, you know, that'll work. Usually the, the official stands in front of the ball where you can't kick it until you look down there. But second and six. Demps alongside Tebow. Right it up the middle for a gain of uh, a couple to the 40 yard line. It'll be third down Perry Riley number 56 and Derry Beckworth number 48 Beckworth. Missed the last two games. Well the speed there's Trendon Holloway LSU on the left 10.02 finish seventh in the Olympic trial semis and Jeffrey Demps 10.01 finished eighth. That was uh, the fastest time ever posted by a high school athlete for Jeffrey Demps. Third down well, timeout forced to take a timeout bad substitutions. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. Konica Minolta. Sonic. And by Progressive Insurance. Tim Tebow back on the field for the Florida Gators. And now let's take a look at Home Depot's tools for success. 
Well, one way to be impressive, obviously, is gaudy numbers like last year. But this year, he's doing the little things. This time, he reads the safety. When the safety follows the crossing route, the long pass down in that bad vacated area to Percy Harvin got the lucky tip pass, but it still was the correct read. Now, Harvin on a linebacker. Go to the right matchup. A good quarterback finds the proper matchup. This time he finds the right matchup and delivers. It's not all just running around and making plays with your feet and being emotional. A good quarterback learns how to use his five weapons, and Tebow is growing. Tebow has run only three times tonight for seven yards. He's completed 11 of 18. Third down, three. There you go. There's that short yardage Tebow that we first saw two years ago in this game. Riley and Taylor make the tackle. Laying it out, LSU had no safety deep on this one, and Tebow just runs it right off tackle. What did Dan Mullen tell us, Vern? He thinks he's the best short yardage back in the country. Right. Not quarterback. Best short yardage back in the country. 6'3", 240. Dan Mullen, of course, is the offensive coordinator for the Gators. Up uh, in the press box, works very closely with Tebow on a daily basis. First down, 10. He's got it. Comes left. Jai Eugene forces him out of bounds. And let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Once again, here's Tim Brando. Vern, Missouri is now up on Oklahoma State. Jimmy Jackson's one-yard run caps off an 11th play, 95-yard drive. Chase Daniel was 8 of 8 on the drive for 77 yards. Mizzou leads it at Furrow Field. They call it the Zoo, 17-14. Back to you. How about those quarterbacks, Gary, in the Big 12 South? You've well. got a great battle today with McCoy and Bradford. And Chase Daniel, Graham yep. Harrell at Texas Tech. A lot of experience there. That's what this conference to date does not have. They hand it off. Dibbs breaks a tackle. And he does get the first down at the 44-yard line. Curtis Taylor, number 27. See, Dibbs and Rainey are used to running the ball between the tackles. They're not shy about it. Everybody wondered whether Florida's offensive line could handle that LSU front four? The answer to the question is yes, good enough. They've been doing their job. Nice job by that offensive line this time. Marcus Gilbert, Pouncey, Carl Johnson. There was a flag on the last play. Offside LSU declined and Marquise Pouncey, one of the twins up front, starters at center and right guard. Marquise and Mike Pouncey out of Lakeland powerhouse in Florida high school football both started last year as true freshmen yeah first down 10 take Casey the tight end number 84 Pebo steps back now tucks it and runs and he's down at the 39 yard line the tackle made by number 56 Perry Riley well Tim gave us that update on Missouri which uh, some smiles in our production truck, Craig Silver, our producer. <laughs> Texas won, and no, Texas defeated Oklahoma. Great game this afternoon. Missouri leads, LSU trails here. Alabama off week at home against Ole Miss. Next week, Penn State leading. My goodness, 41-7. I, 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 I guess I'm a bit surprised that the coaches would have Missouri ranked ahead of LSU and Alabama. Second down. Again, the play fake from the backside. Tebow has a man. It is caught out of bounds at the two-yard line. Lewis Murphy. You can't do it any better than this. Out and up to the outside and just beats the guy. Watch it. Out and up to the backside. Murphy right here, right underneath the, the, the little signal right there. And up. Watch this. Comes out. Goes out. And boom, and now Tebow throws a wonderful ball and beats, I think it's Phelan Jones, the freshman to the outside out there. Can't throw a ball any better than this. On the line, gets one foot in, beautiful throw, beautiful play, and they set up play to the outside. Was it Chris Hawkins that was the defender? Yes, that it time? was. Well, Chris Hawkins, number 29. And on first and goal, Brandon James in the backfield. Tebow peels off to his left, strolls in. Touchdown. Florida.
Jonathan Phillips on for the extra point. Rowley will hold. And the snapper, James Smith. It's up and it is good. So LSU opens the third with a touchdown drive of 80 yards. Florida comes right back, 67 yards. Eight plays, the payoff comes from number 15. And you know, just the threat of Tebow throwing the ball forced LSU to stay off. Boy, when this guy's on, he's really on. Don't forget, later in the game tonight, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Got a couple of candidates. It's 27-14. Both teams with a touchdown here in the third quarter. See, now, if you're an offensive coordinator in this game, Dan Mullen or Gary Croton, you're going, you know what? Both of our defenses are having problems. This is going to be a scoring game. I, I really don't, can't, don't have time to run the ball between the tackles. We just got to keep scoring points and then look up at the end of the game, see who wins. That one taken on one hop by Keelan Williams and good kickoff coverage by the Gators, it'll be first down and 10 as Will Hill, number 10. Back up safety. There's Hill. Defensive coach Charlie Strong said he's going to become an outstanding player for the Gators before his career is over. First down, 10. The changeup for LSU was speed from Holiday and LaFell in the backfield from the shotgun. Remember running those routes against the linebackers. Jared Lee, the last two drives, has been almost perfect. He'll throw on first down with time. And a mix-up on the route. It was intended for LaFell, but he was going left, and the ball was over his outside shoulder. Major right, number 21, defending. Not really any uh, surprise what Florida's going to do to you. They play man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, <laughs> Major Wright pulls off just in time there. Good no call from the official. Second and 10. It's Andrew Hatch as we rotate the quarterbacks again. And Holiday. Here's Holiday. Starts right, goes back left. Out of a tackle, little swivel hip, and he's out of bounds at the 29-yard line, driven there by Brandon Spikes, number 51. You know what I was interested in about Holiday, as fast as he is? I, I, see how ironic this is to you. He's not big enough to be a pro track star because he takes too many strides to run the 100. Turnover, okay? they call it. It's right. not enough. So he's actually big enough to play pro, pro football, but not big enough to run track. How ironic is that? It is. With that world-class speed, third and four, Lee is in at quarterback. Two receivers to the left, one of whom comes in motion. That's Brandon LaFell. He's followed by Joe Hayden. Here comes the rush from Brandon Spikes, and it's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. LaFell has been abusing Joe Hayden on that slot spot inside. Joe Hayden cannot handle LaFell. Watch him out again. Hayden's got him. Look at this. If that ball's on target, it's a 35-yard game. I mean, there's a reason why it wasn't quite on target. I'm not, you know, I mean, that was a good pass rush, and that's what happens when you get a good pass rush. But had it been there, that would have been a big play. Josh Jasper, one of the two men who is wearing number 30. We're going to get the rugby kick here now. There, up. Oh, oh. Flag before the attempted punt. See, they put Trinan Holiday out there, and that's a counteract Brandon James's speed. Before the snap, false start, number 52 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remain fourth down. Your mention of rugby brings to mind a booth visitor we had before the game. Oh, yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? A golf colleague, Nick Faldo, who lives in Orlando, visiting uh, the Swamp tonight with a couple of friends from England. The ideally named perfect couple, that's their uh -huh. last name. Rowena and Chris, and it's their first college football game ever. That's Holiday. And here is the little rugby cook. A kick, yes. Brandon James. 
This time they got him at the 40-yard line. R.J. Jackson with a tackle. That's a 42-yard punt. Why, why would they dress both punters, kickers, in 30? Uh, to confuse Mr. Lundquist, that's why. <laughs> to confuse us. Maybe it confuses the defense whether they're going to go for a field goal or a punt. That could be the only thing. They've done a heck of a job. job they have, does it? Tim Tebow, superlative night so far. He threw for a 70-yarder on the receiving end, Percy Harvin, and then a much shorter touchdown connection with Harvin. And then most recently, Tebow on the rollout. Got a little key block, and Keiston Moore strolled in for the touchdown. Tim Tebow responsible for all three tonight. On your left, his mom, Pam, and that was uh, his dad, Bob, from the Jacksonville area. And here's Tebow sidearming it out to Riley Cooper, number 11, and uh, that's good for a game to the 50-yard line. You know, Danny McCray, number 44, with the tackle. You guys, uh, Tim just looks so much more comfortable throwing the ball from different points than he did a year ago. You know, on the run, in the pocket, deep balls, short balls, touch passes. I know his stats aren't where they were last year, and, and, and I know he's... You know what I think might have happened to him also? That interception might have freed him up. He had 200 passes where he hadn't had an interception, and he might have been being a little too careful. Right now, he looks like a more relaxed quarterback. On second down, starts forward, then backs up under some pressure. Jacob Cotrera missed him, and a first down for Tebow and the Gators to the 46-yard line. Kelvin Shepard, number 11. Well, this one wasn't by design. This was second and very short. It was a play action pass from the shotgun, from the spread. And now Tebow says, I just want to get down, make sure I get a first down. And credit should be given. It was Raheem Alem, 84, instead of Contrera, 54, who uh, just did miss. And good coverage downfield that time by LSU. You bet. Very good coverage. First down and 10, Gators. Rainey goes right, tackled at the 43-yard line. Kelvin Shepard led the way, and we go back to uh, New York. Once again, here's Tim Brando. Vern, Gary, the thing about the Big 12 is the number of great quarterbacks that you don't know their names. Zach Robinson may be one of those guys. Three of three for 62 yards on this drive. A 40-yarder to Damian Davis. Four plays, 66-yard drive, 21-17. Okie State with the lead. Back to you. All right, thank you, Tim. Oh. Oklahoma State's a good football team. Looks like uh, Boone's Pickens <laughs> money starting to pay off there for the facilities and football players. Well, he's it? one of the few in the country that still has some. <laughs> Here's the toss left. Here goes Demps. Touchdown. Not want to play Florida anytime soon now. They are starting to crank up an offense that uh, you haven't seen in a while. They've got a lot of weapons now. I'll tell you, this was so well blocked by the offensive line this time. And Marquise Pouncey was one of the keys. He was. The center number 56. Pouncey pulled on the play and got downfield to do that. Extra point. They cut it inside the left upright. 42-yard run, John Demps. Something happened Demp. real early. Watch the lineman right here, cut right there. And then Pouncey comes around and gets a block. Watch the option. Inside, Troutwine gets a block on Shepard. And then here comes Pouncey right here. Watch this. Gets in there. Now watch another block downfield. And then zoom. That's it. He's gone. We got speed in the game. We've got a Heisman quarterback in the game. And we have maybe the most dangerous football player in the country in the game, Percy Harvin. Urban Meyer said he wants to have the fastest team in America. He's getting close. Florida scored the first 20 in this ball game. LSU uh, had 14 unanswered, and now Florida has come back, and they once again have a 20 point lead 34 14. 
102 to go, third quarter. Phillips, it's Trendon Holiday at the four. Oh boy, beauty. Kate Holiday, number 22, on the special teams. Hey, Vern, we give a lot of credit to the running backs and the quarterbacks, but watch the offensive line on this one. The center, the guard, the tackle, and the tight end. Four guys, but watch them, they all get it. Inside, Troutwine cuts, the guard gets him. Hernandez out here does a great job. Pouncy downfield is gonna get his block, and then the speed just goes. Four key blocks on one play. That's about as good as you get. That's the offensive lineman sitting there smoking cigars on day. <laughs> Garrett Lee back in. Florida now. We've still got 57 seconds to go. Third quarter, 383 yards. This pass for LaFell incomplete. It'll be second down. Mentioned that Jarrett Lee uh, began his high school career in Brownwood out in West Texas. His dad, Stephen, is the wide receivers coach at Brenham. Uh, they won last night. I'll give you all the news oh, here. Yeah. They beat Magnolia West 30 to nothing in Division 18 4A. But that only got them to two and three. LSU had the lead, lead in rushing, but tonight it's been Florida. LSU loads it up left side. Comes pressure from the end. He goes deep, and he's got a man at the 38-yard line. That's Demetrius Bird. Ahmad Black, number 35, made the tackle, but a 22-yard gain. And this was just put it up and say, Bird, make a play for me. Coming right down the field right there. Put it up, throw it up, right over the outside, outstretched hands. I guess it was Joe Hayden, number five. It was. What a wonderful throw, and Bird climbs up and gets it. First down and 10 after the pickup of 22. Lee, who has rotated much of the game with Hatch, stays in. Play fake. Back to throw. Double coverage. Bird is popped by Major Wright, and it was tipped by Janoris Jenkins. There's Wright, number 21. Now, that's the type of safety play that you need to win in the SEC. You're not going to be able to cover every play, but you got to get across and make those plays. Jenkins sits back. There's no one in the flats. So he gets back, gets it, and then the safety comes across and makes the hit on Bird. Jenkins, number 29, a true freshman at the corner. Richard Murphy is on for LSU. Motion, flag. Florida was in the neutral zone. It should be a penalty against Florida, I would assume. Before the snap, offsides, number 71 on the defense, five-yard penalty, it remains second down. So even if the offensive line flinches, it was caused by that uh, Florida charge into the, into the neutral zone. Not a lot of penalties in this game. No. Total of eight. Matt Patchen, number 71, the backup tackle. Freshman out of Tampa. Well, again. let's try it again. Carlos Dunlap, number eight, came across. That's an easy first down. Boy, penalties. Urban was still upset about penalties in the last game. Before the snap, offsides, number eight on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty, and it will result in a first down. Ur Urban's going to get lightheaded again pretty soon <laughs> if that happens again. There's Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator, yelling at his team. So back-to-back, -back, it's first down and ten. Lee out of the gun. Hand off left side. That was Richard Murphy. You know, yeah, we did notice uh, the guys in the truck saw this on the replay that Charles Scott, right here, number 32, right in the hole, gets hit and just comes off limp and he tweaks his ankle on that play. We'll look to see if he can get back in the football game. Scott limited to only 17 yards 
on 10 carries tonight. And that's the end of the third quarter with our score 34-14 Florida. We'll return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium right after this word from your local station. Another of the traditions with Florida football at the end of the third quarter every home game. Student body and the fans gather and sing we are the boys and indeed they are tonight as the Gators lead at 34 14 as we begin the final 15 minutes. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson and as we resume play second down eight LSU at the 50 yard line. Here's Lee right side intercepted second of the game for Brandon Spikes Foot race with Lloyd hit. And here goes Spikes. Touchdown, Florida. Oh. Now get flagged for that one. That will not sit well with the coach from Florida, I'll tell you that. That wouldn't sit well with me if I was the coach. Garrett Lee thought Brandis Spikes was going to rush on the play. He never accounted for him. Spikes was lined up at the line of scrimmage and backed right off into the play. Sportsmanlike conduct, number 51 against Florida. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. You know, some of us think some excessive celebration penalties are a little picky. Nothing picky about that one. That was just selfish. I, I yeah, it really, really was. Spikes for the touchdown. Now the extra point. Spikes is lined up right over the right guard. Backs out into the play, reads the eyes of J Jared Lee, and it's a touchdown all the way. 52 yards by number 51. And this one's out of hand, 41-14. And now it's time for our Geico scoring recap. Florida got on the uh, boards early. This tip pass into the hands of Percy Harvin, 70 yards. And that made it 7-0 Florida. Jonathan Phillips with a 20-yard field goal. Gators up 10-0. And then it was a combination of Tebow to Harvin for a second time. This is a seven yard pass, 17 nothing. We had just completed play at the end of the first quarter. Jonathan Phillips, second field goal, 20 to zip. And then just before the half, LSU got a touchdown pass from Jarrett Lee to Chris Mitchell. And at the break, it was 20 to seven. LSU opened this third quarter with an excellent scoring drive. Andrew Hatch got the touchdown from three yards out, cut it to 20 to 14 but then Tebow with the answer on their subsequent drive he got it in from two yards it was 27 14 Jeff Demps a 42 yard touchdown run using that great speed and a good block from Marquise Pouncey made it 34 14 and just a moment ago Brandon Spikes with his second interception of the ball game this one returned 52 yards for a Florida touchdown and then Oofta. You know, earlier this year, Urban Meyer put the muzzle on Brandon Spikes because he was quoted in a paper here in Gainesville as saying Tennessee quit in the game last year. And uh, I would expect that Urban's going to have some strong words for Brandon Spikes after that. Well, he's a wonderful football player. You bet. That was just uncalled for. Right side, Holiday. And he's out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Well, besides the drive at the end of the half, then the opening drive, which they caught, caught Florida a little off balance. 
Boy, it has been total, total domination by Florida in this game, hasn't it? Oh. It's hard to even. Lee handoff. And Scott, who is back on the field. Out to the left side. Well, you see 41 points. Most allowed under less miles. Fourteen oh seven to go. Flag on the far side, flag from the backfield. It's really difficult to go in this league with untested, inexperienced quarterbacks with the level of defense. Before the snap, false start, number 78 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. That is Joseph Barksdale. There's two really good quarterbacks that you can count on in this, game, in this league, I think. Tebow and Stafford. John Parker Wilson is at the next level. Maybe he's just a shade below him. If Parker Wilson ends up playing as well as he, they hope, that might be the, uh, the other team that has the third quarterback. That one across the middle, Demetrius Bird left side. And he is caught at the 49 yard line. Now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Hearn, I believe we would all agree Chase Daniel is the leader in the Heisman race coming in tonight, but he does have two picks, 29 of 40, 285 yards. This interception would lead to a touchdown for Oklahoma State as they have a bigger lead. Colt McCoy had a big day. Javon Ringer over 1,000 yards so far this year. Michael Crabtree, five catches, 89 yards in that matchup. 41-14, third and four. Lee in and out of the hands of Tolliver, number 80, Terrence Tolliver. Jared Lee never got his feet set on this one. He kept bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, and that's why he was inaccurate. Watch here, he doesn't trust. He has good protection. He does. He sets, bounce, kind of half steps and runs away from it, and the ball was very inaccurate again. Never got level. He was kind of off balance, and the fourth down less is going to go for it. And this is out of desperation, not out of plan. Yeah, a little different circumstance right. than a year ago when they were five for five. Fourth and four. They've only gone for a first down, a fourth down three times this year. Is this a timeout? I think Jared Lee looked back at Steve Shaw and said, we need to take one. Would have got a delay a game had they not. LSU has used two timeouts, one left. We'll step aside. 12.53 to go, fourth quarter, and LSU fourth and four. Under Les Miles, 77% conversion rate. Fourth and four here. They have not been able to control the line of scrimmage in this football game, though. It's been all finesse and passing. Lee, incomplete, ball goes over. That was Joe Hayden. It sure was. LaFell and Hayden, that's been the matchup. LaFell's won a few. This time Hayden bakes them and then runs across and lays out and really throws LaFell off. Would have been a great catch, but that's good coverage. That's about as good as you can do if you're a DB. So Florida gets it on downs. Chris Rainey is in the backfield with Tim Tebow. 41-14 after the Tigers had cut it to 20-14 early in this half. Tebow will throw. Yes, and he's hit from behind. Is that? That's a fumble. It is. Absolutely. Tyson Jackson, number 93, picks it up. And he is knocked out of bounds, but it is ruled 
a fumble and now Lewis Murphy and Tyson Jackson get into a little verbal exchange. A real interesting call there. 41 14 and they go for another home run ball and it ends up costing Florida and putting LSU with some life in them again. I mean I know I know it's not likely but boy a couple runs and a first down the game's almost over. The hit made by Raheem Alem and then picked up by Tyson Jackson. So Jackson with the fumble recovery. And uh, LSU takes over first down and 10. And now it should be a little bit of a gas defense now for Florida. First down and 10. Well, they have half a play or one play of rest just. Yeah. Here's Lee. Little screen. Keelan Williams to the 23 yard line. Well, I think we can assume with 12 23, it'd take uh, some monumental comeback for LSU to win this. What have you learned about either of these teams so far? Well, it's not going to be as easy as everybody thought for LSU. I mean, you know, they now remember this they've got eight straight games at the end of the year because of the move game from right. Troy into their bye week. At South Carolina is not going to be easy. Georgia, Alabama in front of them. And Florida controls their own destiny again if they, should they win this game. That's Keenan Williams. Crowd responding to uh, something. Here are the SEC East standings. Vanderbilt losing at Mississippi State today. So they are 5 and 1 overall, more significantly 3 and 1 in conference play. Georgia. Defeated Tennessee, Florida. We haven't given it to them yet, but they're well in command here. And, and remember, Florida only has one more road game. Right. Here's Lee inside to his tight end, Richard Dixon. Meanwhile, out west, where LSU is trying to defend Alabama, will be there next week. Ole Miss at Alabama in Tuscaloosa. How can you not put Alabama number one? Two victories, not at home against top ten teams when they played them. Played Clemson in Atlanta, and here's Dixon down to the five or the uh, yes, it is the five yard line, maybe the six. Major Wright makes the tackle for the game. Major Wright with the tackle. You know what's interesting here now with this fumble by uh, Florida. It kind of allows LSU to maybe find themselves in the fourth quarter like Florida did against Arkansas last week. Lee for the touchdown, yep. Dixon. You know what I mean? You're, you're down on yourself. Nothing's working. All of a sudden, you put 250 yards on the board against Arkansas, and you feel good about yourself. Same thing could happen for LSU. They're down 41-14. Get a turnover. Now you leave this game feeling good about yourself. And Colt David will come on as Lee second touchdown toss of this ball game. I, I think the Florida defense was gassed. They, they, they didn't know where to line up. They didn't cover anybody. This whole drive, there wasn't a, a Florida defender near a, a play to make a stop. Three flags on the extra point try. Illegal formation, six men on the line on the offense. That'll be a five yard penalty. We'll replay the try. Remember, uh, Les had a uh, onside kick last game also against Auburn, excuse me, against Auburn a few weeks ago. So the try at the uh, line of scrimmage moved back five yards. Colt David will try it again. That was almost blocked. It was. Well, Florida was a little bit, you know, not sure what to do. They're all lined up. They're looking at each other. There's Dixon. He just runs right in the middle, and he's wide open. Watch this. Nobody even covers him. <laughs> I mean, you know, four guys run with the flare. They were completely out of sync. They just weren't ready to play defense after the turnover. Match. Hasn't been quite as scintillating as the game a year ago. 62 points combined tonight. And uh, I have a feeling we'll surpass that total of 69 points before this one's over. Set up for the onside kick. Both teams are.
Here's Colt David's attempt. Nice bounce. Out of bounds. Well, that was well executed with Tolliver there at the end guy. David Nelson, I think, was there. Uh oh. Uh, Lewis Murphy. You know, this always is one of those collision plays. You're looking at the ball. It's a very dangerous play. It's the one play where everybody's looking at the ball and the uh, and the guys can come down and take your legs out. It's one of my least favorite plays, you know, for serious possible injury. Lewis Murphy just got killed on that play. I mean, you know, you're looking at the ball and since it bounced, you can be hit on the play. You can't call a fair catch. Florida takes over at the 43. Tebow. Again, they run the dive right, uh, right side. I mean, watch Murphy. The ball bounces, so now it's up in air, and you got to look for the ball. Right there. Right in the middle. Boom. Number nine. Look at this. Oh, my. Watch him swing around, and his leg will land on the ground. That centrifugal force of your leg whips through and hits the ground like that. That is probably as dangerous a play as there is in football right there. Murphy the senior getting medical attention on the Florida bench. It'll be second down and eight. Chris Rainey is alongside Tebow now. Rainey goes left and it's going to be third down at the 35 yard line. That gives us a moment to go back once again to New York. Here's Tim Brando. All right, fellas, things are tightening up for Missouri and Oklahoma State. Chase Daniels goes seven yards to Denario Alexander. They go for two and fail, 28-23. The last unbeaten in the Big Ten is Penn State. Look for them to jettison in the polls. They blow out Wisconsin at Camp Randall. And don't be surprised if Texas moves to number one, Vern, and Alabama sitting at home might move up as well to number one. They'll have a case. All right, Tim, thank you. Third and two. Tebow hand off Rainey first down at the 30. <laughs> I just got the feeling that Urban said to someone hate to say it it probably was to him Mullen. We don't need that. It was 41 14. Let's hand it to our tailbacks and get out of here and get out of here. Now Rainey gets that one. Dan Mullen, offensive coordinator, came here from Utah. How much you want to bet after the game? We get a report that Herbert Meyer had a 103 temperature or the flu or something like that. What do you want to bet? Remember we saw him. Uh, there's Dan. Yep. He and his wife Megan expecting their first child. And, and, and Dan's a really, really bright coach. I mean, he just was going for the juggler there. I think Urban might have reeled him in. Right side. Well, here's Rainey. At the five, and that is a fumble. Yeah, he got twisted around, and if his knee did not come down on the ground, boy, it looks like he's favored he's his hurt. right shoulder there, isn't he? He got twisted right at the end of that play. The ball popped loose. Option play that was just touchdown before. Same block out here. Perfect. Cut it inside. They don't get the safety this time. Now let's watch the end of it. Gets wrapped. Knee does not come down. And then the ball comes out. I think that's a fumble. Well, Chris Rainey still down. Medical staff out on the field. And we'll take a break. Be right back. Now Chris Rainey appeared to be in such pain but uh, got up almost unaided and uh, appears as if he'll be all right and uh, the ball was ruled down by contact before the fumble so Florida maintains possession they have a first and goal at the nine yard line and Jeff Demps is in the backfield rotating with Chris Rainey we'll get a report as soon as we can. Brandon James in motion. Inside pitch. Aaron Hernandez. They worked on that in practice yesterday. That's the second time they've run it. It hasn't worked. Yeah, in the in the commercial, we found why it was called not a fumble. His right elbow comes on the ground as the hit right there. His right elbow touches the ground. It's blown dead right there before the ball pops loose. 
And so second down and nine now. Tebow for the day, 14 of 21 for 210 yards. Jeff Demps is still in the backfield with him and three wide receivers to the left side. 8 12 to go. Tebow has it, gets a downfield block. And he's tackled near the two. See where they spot it? Harry Coleman, number 24, made the stop. Taking off clock, churning up yards, making first downs, and possibly getting the scoreboard up to 48 points if they score a touchdown. Rainey sitting down now and getting a little advice. These two guys, that was my hunch. Remember that yeah. Thursday and Fridays, and my hunch is they found new weapons and a way to run this offense, and they're going with it. Third and goal from the two. Here's Tebow. Jumping Guess pass. what? It was. Yes, it was, but he never got, he never jumped. Well, he, he tried to, but the tight end was covered. I think it was Tate Casey. Tate Casey is kind of saying, was, was I held on that play? It was going to go right here to Casey. Casey tries to free up. He kind of gets grabbed a bit on the play, but not enough for the penalty. Curtis Taylor does a nice job right there. You could tell that LSU is ready for this play. So Jonathan Phillips on for a 25 yard field goal. Perfect for the season. Rally will hold James Smith snaps it back. Phillips. Nine of nine for the year now. Chris Rainey appears to be just fine. 44 21. And now it's time for the five star play of the game presented by Wrangler with the call Mick Huber, Florida Radio Network. And now here's the snap to Tebow, dropping back, looking, looking, and throws the ball deep down the field. It's tipped and in. It's going to be caught by Harvin into the secondary. Harvin the 30, cuts between the hash marks to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! Oh my! Mercy Harvin! Now that was the first of two, and that was the first third down play of the ball game, third and 12. Harvin had another catch later on, and right now this one's a runaway train, 44-21. Tebow for the evening 14 of 21 throwing it but his perfect jump pass record is now dust dust you know number one and number two one more one is lost number two is losing number three is going to lose yeah Alabama you like Alabama, Alabama? Yeah. yeah here's holiday all the way across the 50 to the 44 Jonathan Phillips actually the kicker got there I mean, just think of these names right after this if it, if it falls out the way it's going right now here's the kickoff if you want to play football here's the wedge be a wedge buster did you, ever, did you ever do that no didn't think so no did you ever ask if you could no I was a pretty boy I was a quarterback. <laughs> all right think about these three names if the Oklahoma's lost Missouri's losing LSU's gonna lose right okay Alabama, Texas, Penn State. One, two, three. That's okay. pretty good names, right? It's like uh, the 1960s. Yeah, that's exactly right. Got it. Jared Lee is down. Janoris Jenkins, first sack of the season for Jenkins. Well, it's a corner blitz from the outside. When you're on the near hash coming right out from the pie, you can't see. Number 29 is going to come from the outside. Block is missed. It wouldn't really matter. It was going to be a sack anyway, but uh, dialed up. That's almost a run blitz nowadays. When you're on the near hash, you got to count for that corner. That's a loss of 12, second down and 22, and we're under six minutes to go. Here's a little pass up to Charles Scott. A oh, wonderful play there by Jenkins. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. You know, and just think of I mean, just a freshman for this guy. We see him all over college football. Now that's how you get him. You get him as a little quick screen and slip screen to the outside. Jenkins, top of your screen. Watch him slip one box, slip two box, and make the play. Wow, isn't that nice? And he was uh, he was standing in the way of Saron Black, number yeah, 70. Yeah. 
who checks in at a cool 325 pounds. Third down, 14. Scott, who had rushed in excess of 100 in each of the first four games, has only 11 carries for 22 yards tonight. Terrence Tolliver with the catch far short well, of the first down. And Missouri and Oklahoma State with a heck of a game going on. Let's check in once again with Tim. All right, Vern, down five. Missouri's Chase Daniel throws his third pick. This one taken away by Patrick Levine, but they reviewed it. Look at this. The Big 12 review official blew it. They're likely to lose this game, and this call could be emblematic of what happened. Five and one to go. Fourth down. Lee under some pressure. Incomplete. It'll go over on downs. Yeah. There's been a lot of passes by Lee that have been thrown not accurately. You know, say what you want for Matt Mock and Matt Flynn, that they were just caretakers. They were making a lot of these throws. Now, they weren't making a lot of these throws as freshmen, though. You right. Know, they were making them as juniors and seniors. It takes some time. Urban Meyer trying to get his group organized. They are up 44-21 with 4.48 to go. They lost their last home game here to Ole Miss. Only the second loss at home ever for Urban Meyer. They lost to Auburn a couple years ago. You know the last time they lost back to back at home. You have to go all the way back to 1988. And it won't happen tonight. Here's uh, Demps. This is, this is the new offense. Get used to seeing it. It's a pretty good one. Yep. My goodness. Florida is crushing the ball in this game for over 240 yards against the pride of the LSU defense. And it's two freshman running backs that's soaking wet, can't weigh 175 pounds. Jeff Demps now with 129 yards in this game, and there's a player down. This is Patrick Peterson, the true freshman. Looks like he might have a hammy. Was recruited as Patrick Johnson, or maybe it's just a cramp. Well, let's hope. You know, uh, Vern, let's go back to Florida's opportunity this year. This is the year in the every other year of the SEC where they would play at Florida, but they have the neutral side game in Jacksonville. So Florida only plays three SEC, SEC road games. They only have one left at Vanderbilt. So after this game, we're going to take a look at the schedule there. They, there's a bye next week. And then they get Kentucky, Kentucky at home. All right. Then Georgia in a neutral site. By the way, that game's in Florida. Then at Vandy. Okay. Then South Carolina Citadel to finish and in, in, in Florida State. I mean, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Looking good. Yep. Tebow Meyer. And, and remember one other thing: they do not play Alabama unless maybe they face them in the national in the, in the SEC championship. There's Peterson limping off. Uh, looks like it's a cramp. And on the other side of the ledger, LSU, because they had uh, an off week and then the hurricane. Right. Disrupted things and that game with Troy was moved to November 15th. Oh, by. They're going to get five games at home in a row, though. They are, but but no week off. So right. If you get guys hurt, you, it's hard to get them ready. And their SEC conference schedule is going to go right down to the last regular season game at Arkansas. Here's the handoff. Whoa! Keiston Moore. Now let's uh, give you a. A look at their schedule. Keystone Moore with a gain of 15. They are at South Carolina. A, a, a newly revived South Carolina with a pretty stout defense. Now they'll they'll not back an inch from LSU. Uh, then uh, at home against Georgia Tulane. There might be a small degree of interest in that game on November 8th. Nick Saban makes a return to Baton Rouge. There's only two games. I mean, it, it, you know, South Carolina is going to be a football game. I, I think I'll just rewrite myself as I say it. That's going to be a good football game. Before I thought it was Alabama, basically, and Georgia, but I think South Carolina is going to give them a tussle. And that one is next week in Columbia. Marlon Favorite with the tackle. 
Well, this one, it got close in the early third quarter, and Tim Tebow is through for the night. Yeah, he was called out. Remember that. And he promised the fans of Florida that he would be a great lead. He can't play any harder than he's played his first three years. But he said, I will be a great leader the rest of the year. And he has been more than a leader tonight. Now, recall earlier when they lost at home, Tim Tebow took 45 minutes in the locker room to compose himself before he met with the media, made that statement that you saw earlier. Here's Keystone Moore. And the clock shows 244 and running. Harry Coleman, Marlon Favorite with the tackle there. John Brantley is on now. Right. As the quarterback, Brantley, redshirt freshman from Ocala, just 50 miles away. Well, it's only one loss if you're LSU, though. And, and we, saw, we saw it last year. Absolutely. But this one looks so it different, is. Gary. Those were triple overtime losses last year. Remember, both of them were triple overtime losses. This time, this team got pushed around in this game. Here's Brantley. And the defensive front four was basically no fan. Keaston Moore. Touchdown. Why not? Well, actions are louder than words. And tonight, Florida's action were louder than the pregame words from LSU. Fifty points. Five zero about to become five one. Gators lead less miles Tigers by 30. Back in a moment. Facing a critical challenge, will a tribe member be a no-show? And will Sugar's immunity secret be revealed? Keep a lookout. And Trendon Holloway, Holiday rather, goes around the right side and is out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And our direct TV player of the game, Tim Tebow. 14 of 21 for 210, two touchdowns. Rushed for 22, had one rushing touchdown, and he is our direct TV player of the game. Well, the last time Florida scored 50 plus points against LSU was 1996. We were just looking in the book. Danny Warfel was a quarterback that year. In the swamp, 56 13. Did you guys do that game? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering if it was like 40. 3 to 13 with three minutes to go, and they were still throwing. Exactly. You think uh, there's a chance? For Steve, yes. I do. Yeah, I do. That's my offense. It's my offense. It's my <laughs> you know, I talking about LSU now. Now, remember, this thing isn't over now for, of course, this game is, but the season isn't. And that's the point here. You know what I think broke down? Besides the speed at running back for LSU, and a great game from Tebow, obviously. The other thing that broke down for this LSU team is they were not able to run the ball and control the line of scrimmage. Les Miles in his brilliant record at LSU has a three and four record when they rush for under 100 yards. It's now three and five. They could not control the line of scrimmage and it exposed their young quarterbacks. And Charles Scott's run of 100 plus there it is again. They ends can't. tonight. There's Scott. That's his 12th carry for 20 two yards yeah. maybe negative yardage there and of the 60 yards about half of them were gimmick runs or scrambles I mean this is a huge day for the front seven of the Florida defense who basically was challenged before this game in fact we asked Urban that question didn't we Vern? we said yeah. if you you know nobody wants a turnover but if you could take one thing in this game what would you take? And he says, I want my front seven to stand up against the run. And he got it. Final 25 seconds. Gators will go to five and one. LSU loses its first. Uh, 
of the season. Demetrius Bird, the intended receiver, and he got it. Justin Williams out there. So Andrew Hatch, now we've got 15 seconds remaining as they reset the chains. Hatch. Deep left side for Bird is incomplete, and that stops the clock with three seconds remaining. Well, the, the league has kind of reloaded again. Georgia's back in it. Florida's back in it. Alabama's still there. LSU isn't going away. That's Dan, Dan Mullen. Mullen. That's why you love that as a coordinator. The game gets so out of, out of whack that you can come down from the box to, to hug people on the sideline. Dan Mullen helped coach Tim Tebow to the Heisman Trophy last year. He and his wife Megan have a Wheaton Terrier dog whose name is Heisman. Here's Scott. Last play of the game. Fifty-one twenty-one. Thibault leads the Gators to a convincing victory at home. Mr. Two Bits enjoyed it. For Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, our entire CBS SEC crew. Good night from Gainesville. We'll see you next week from Tuscaloosa.